in LA this week. I'm Anna Marcos. It's a way to green the environment and save some of our precious drinking water. More on the Penmar Water Quality Improvement Project coming up. Nearly 15,000 job opportunities for teenagers and young adults in Los Angeles. I'm Rasha Goel, and that story's up next. And for those youth not working this summer, another city program hopes to keep them busy all summer long. That's up next. Hello and welcome to LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. I'm Yana Kay. Minimum wage workers in Los Angeles just got a 50 cent wage increase. This comes after city leaders last year signed a comprehensive wage increase plan. Anna Marcos has more. It's official. 600,000 of LA's lowest income workers will now be taking home heftier paychecks, 50 cents an hour heftier. And if they work for an employer with more than 25 workers, they also get six days of paid sick leave benefits. When someone works hard, they should be able to support themselves and support their families. If the wage goes up, so will our quality of life. We won't have to decide whether we're going to put food on the table, we're going to put gas on the car. Last year, L.A. city leaders signed an ambitious minimum wage hike into law to increase wages to $15 an hour by 2020. This is the first of the scheduled hikes, which takes the minimum wage from $10 to $10.50 an hour. Small businesses will get an extra year to start the increases. The added dollars that they make will be spent in ways that will add income to local businesses and also create and sustain jobs. Now I've heard concerns that a higher minimum wage will put too much pressure on small businesses, but CEOs and store owners alike will tell you the f to be the first to tell you that poverty is terrible for business. Any job losses will be more than offset by increases in job growth. Supporters say it's the beginning of a push away from poverty wages to a more livable income for Angelinos. And because it happened in Los Angeles, it happened in Santa Monica. Because it happened in Los Angeles City, it happened in Los Angeles County. The state of California will soon follow in the city's footsteps as well. It will launch its wage hikes starting next January. L.A., now the first big city in America to begin the climb to a $15 an hour minimum wage. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. City Attorney Mike Fuhrer's office will help host a workshop with business leaders on July 26 to help L.A. businesses learn more about complying with the new wage laws. Well, House Democrats who staged a dramatic sit-in to support tougher gun laws gathered on the steps of L.A. City Hall. As Gil Reyes reports, city leaders stood beside them in their cause. Shannon Johnson was among 14 people murdered in the San Bernardino terrorist shooting. That attack in December also devastated his girlfriend, Mandy Pfeiffer. But for the first time in a long time, my heart was filled with love and pride, and I am... I'm convinced that my representatives and our representatives aren't going to stand silent anymore. Pfeiffer applauded congressional Democrats at L.A. City Hall recently. One week earlier, some of these same representatives had seized the House floor in Washington, D.C. and staged a dramatic 26-hour sit-in, demanding a vote on national gun control measures. Despite the strong showing, their protest ended without a vote. We're doing everything that we can and still Washington is failing to act. LA City Councilman Paul Krikorian has authored some of the toughest local gun laws. Governor Brown helps the cause by passing several laws himself, including a new state ban on assault rifles with high capacity mags. But city council members say local laws are not enough. Because illegal guns can be transferred here from states where they are legal, they say national legislation is needed to truly make a difference. We know here in California we've got some of the strongest laws. Yet in South L.A., gun violence is still a troubling issue. Uh, and I'm tired of getting reports of young men of color losing their lives. It happens so often in our city that the news doesn't even cover it anymore. In response to the mass shooting at a gay nightclub in Orlando, openly gay city councilman Mitch O'Farrell has a warning for the NRA, the gun lobby, and come election time, Republicans in Congress who refuse to act. The LGBT community is coming after you. 
We are coming after you. And we are not going to stop. We are not going to relent until we have an assault weapons ban across the land in every state of the nation. Outside That's L.A. City Hall, I'm Gil and Reyes for L.A. This Week. Murder. This devastation or a federal ban on assault weapons expired in 2004, leaving it up to state and local governments to create their own assault weapon laws. Well, the nation's top legal advocate puts L.A. front and center as a role model for community policing. U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch paid a visit to talk social media, police transparency, and why L.A. is tops on the list. Anna Marcos reports. A round of applause for U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch, who spent an entire day visiting the LAPD. L.A. is the last stop in a six-city tour that has featured cities doing the most cutting-edge work in community policing. Lynch applauded the LAPD's crime-fighting efforts, its work with the homeless, and its long road back from the days of corruption scandals and a former federal consent decree. This kind of proactive and inclusive approach particularly arising out of a history of tensions, is one that we are encouraging in police departments around the country. This is a police department that has learned many hard lessons. And if some of our hard lessons, some of the things that we've learned about building community trust, some of the things that we've learned about keeping a difficult city safer can help other cities. Lynch is using L.A. as a role model for how law enforcement can use technology and social media. She says social media, which has brought to light many use of force incidents by police in communities of color, can also be the tool that helps officers reach out and heal divisions. I took part in a virtual ride along and during which members of the LAPD used uh, Periscope to stream video of the experience and they engaged with their followers on Twitter to shed light on the kind of work that they do every day. City leaders also announced they are moving ahead with funding to put body cameras on every LAPD officer on the street. Body-worn cameras will resu result in greater accountability, both for officers and for the public. They will enable our men and women in blue to build greater trust with people that are in our communities. Reporters asked Lynch her thoughts on the LAPD's policy, which denies access to the video by the public without a court order. My view has always been that you try and be as transparent as possible and that when you cannot be, whether it's a body-worn camera issue or whether when I am as here, for example, what if I give a press conference on a case and there are things that we cannot go into, I try and tell you why we can't go into it. Transparency for Lynch, a key issue. She says her department will publish a report on her tour so that police and communities around the country can put some of the best practices to use as they work together to find trust. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. Other cities Lynch visited during the tour included Miami, Portland, Oregon, and Fayetteville, North Carolina. And after her visit to the LAPD, Attorney General Lynch joined Mayor Garcetti to kick off Summer Night Lights, a program that aims to keep young people busy and off the streets during the summer. Rasha Goel has more. L.A. City Mayor Eric Garcetti recently kicked off the Summer Night Lights program at the Highland Park Recreation Center. The program has been successful in helping to steer both youth and adults in a direction opposite to crime by creating activities for the community and keeping centers open up late during the summer hours. Summer Night Lights takes a rec center or a park in a neighborhood that's challenged with resources, with too much crime. It's bringing in the folks to run workshops on healthy cooking, silk screening, bike repair, bring in community resources to share information. U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch, who has been at the forefront of strengthening relationships between police and the community, says it's a joint effort between the city and its people. You have to have a strong community who raises problems. You have to have a strong community who asks questions. You have to have a strong community who says we'll work with you but here's what we need, and they come out and they support what people build together. As a councilman for the 13th District, Mayor Eric Garcetti then began a program called At the Park After Dark, which included sports and counseling programs for the local youth. Former Mayor Antonio Villaregosa adopted the program, calling it Summer Night Lights nine years ago, and expanded it into some of the most gang-infested parks in the city. Highland Park Recreation Center was one of the primary targeted locations since the start of the program. It all comes from having public space where we can gather safely 
to build community. I used to be a knucklehead myself, so this program has really helped me a lot. You know, it's helped me stay away from the streets. It's helped me find new friends, make a family with my, my youth squad. In this program, at 32 sites in Los Angeles and the San Fernando Valley, parks become a place of safety for the youth by providing meals, activities, and fun services for families. And all services are provided for free. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. Parks close at 11 p.m. Wednesdays through Saturdays until August 6th. For an additional three weeks between August 12th and August 26th, the parks will be open on Fridays and Saturdays until 11 p.m. But Garcetti wants to do more than just keep young people busy during the summer. Garcetti also wants to put them to work. Rasha Goel explains. Rasha. Yana, I'm here at Grand Park in downtown Los Angeles where Mayor Eric Garcetti, in collaboration with county officials and private partners, has announced the commitment of 15,000 job opportunities for young adults between the ages of 14 to 21. Now, it's basically being done through a program called Hire LA's Youth, which provides meaningful work experience to help lead them towards a potential career goal. A brain surgeon, which is exactly what I want to come and go to USC. In just a few months, Marquel Robinson went from being homeless to wanting to create a life for himself. Thanks to programs such as Higher LA's Youth, young adults have employment opportunities. Marquel is currently working at 7-Eleven, but is on his way to pursuing his dream of becoming a brain surgeon. They actually saw potential in me and actually were able to go out of their way and put step forth a foot to buy, hey, we're going to help you. Moise Ali, a franchisee of 7-Eleven, also started a college fund for Marquel to help him reach his goal. This is the youth. These are the people that are going to make a difference for me, my kids, and my generation. But we have to invest in them today. Ali is among other private partners working with the city and county to create opportunities for the youth of Los Angeles. In 2013, a study that we did showed that one out of five teens in L.A. is disconnected. What does that mean? 20% of Angelinos weren't in school. They didn't have jobs. They're just kind of floating, disconnected. That's unacceptable. We also know that any investment in our young people works and pays back tenfold. For every year a teenager works while in high school, their income rises by an average of 15 percent by the time they get into their 20s. Higher LA's youth provides jobs in a variety of industries, including health care, transportation, entertainment, government, and hospitality. Even though there are barriers out there, artificial and whatever, you just keep going. Because one day you can end up being the Secretary of Labor. You could end up being the mayor of L.A. You could, be, you could end up being a county board of supervisor. In February of this year, the mayor set a goal to triple the number of youth jobs that were being created when he took office. To date, employers have made more than 13,000 hiring commitments towards that goal. But the mayor still put out a challenge. Please hire at least one young person in L.A. County this summer. In downtown Los Angeles, I'm Rasha Goel for L.A. This Week. For more information on the program, you can visit HireLAYouth.com or call 213-744-7333. Well, a new stormwater recapture technology is helping to cut down on LA's need for imported water while keeping parks and golf courses green. Anna Marcos takes us to the groundbreaking for the Penmar Park Water Quality Improvement Project. Soon, the water that keeps the grass green here at the Penmar Golf Course and the Penmar Park across the street will be cleaner and greener, and it will no longer put a strain on our precious drinking water. Yeah. City leaders just broke ground on the second phase of the Penmar Park Water Quality Improvement Project, a stormwater recapture and recycling program. An underground water storage tank has already been built under this field. That has been collecting the first flush, we call it, uh, from the rains, dry weather flow, and we collect it there. And, and you can't see that because it's, it's, right it's right there. The next phase will build a small treatment plant at the park. By using water here that otherwise would have required the use of drinking water, we are making a huge dent in the drought. City leaders are working to cut LA's need for imported water in half by 2024. 
Every little bit counts, and if we can do that, we're going to have a great quality of life here for decades to come, even with a drought. The project will save close to 200,000 gallons of stormwater runoff each day. That's the same amount of water used by a thousand Angelinos a day. In this ever-challenging time of dealing with our California drought, it's incumbent upon us as leaders more than ever to ensure that we have the smart policies and the active tools to make our parks green. The project will cost $23.6 million, and the money will come from Proposition O, California's clean water bond. I think it's great. Just save water and keep the course green. I think it's great. We just need more storms, right, <laughs> to fill the pond across the street. The project could be up and running by the end of 2017. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. Stormwater capture projects are also going online at MacArthur Park, Lake Machado, Hanson Dam, and Highland Park. While well, upgrades on a freeway off-ramp are expected to ease traffic around the nation's busiest port. Gil Reyes has more from Wilmington. Merging on and off the 110 freeway just got easier around the bustling Port of Los Angeles complex. Not only benefit the port, but also the residents that live in this area and just the er everyday um, driver that comes up and down the street is going to see a huge improvement in this intersection. Officials unveil new ramp designs on the 110 in Wilmington. No more C Street exit. It's officially renamed Harry Bridges Boulevard off-ramp and cuts straight to the boulevard for easier access. Before, we used to have an intersection that consisted of a stop sign and a traffic signal. Um, very cumbersome. We also had a at-grade rail crossing that when their trains were there, the, the trucks just backing up the street were ridiculous. All of that is gone now. As we expand and improve the infrastructure within the port complex, we have to be mindful about what, what it looks like outside of the complex as well and ensure that the goods uh, we unload are safely being delivered to their destination with minimal impacts to the surrounding communities. Traffic congestion equals frustration, and frustration is lost time, lost dollars, lost work hours. So today really makes a big difference to ease those frustrations. The freeway on-ramp is also modified, so are area streets to help make driving easier on and off the 110. In Wilmington, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. The upgrades cost $51 million. The Port of LA and Metro paid for the improvements. While well, LA City Council seeks to restrict costume characters on Hollywood Boulevard, a free ticket to ride in Studio City, and making sure low-income children have a healthy meal to eat this summer. All these stories in City Beat. The Los Angeles City Council is looking at limiting the number of costumed street performers allowed along a block of Hollywood Boulevard that attracts hordes of tourists. Police and city officials say they're concerned about overly aggressive sales tactics and about activities that takes up too much space along a lively stretch of the street between Highland Boulevard and Orange Drive. Councilman Paul Krikorian kicked off a free weekend summer shuttle pilot program which loops the entire Studio City Business District. Krikorian took the first ride from Radford Avenue to Coldwater Canyon. He says the new free shuttle program, which runs through Labor Day, will make it easier for residents to get around Studio City without using their car. Anybody who rides this shuttle, we will validate their parking for them. So we take the cars off the road, they can go to all of our shops, come back to one shopping center, which is our parking structure, get the ticket, we pay for it, and they're gone. Mayor Garcetti joined Councilmember Mitchell Farrell and LAUSD officials to highlight the federally funded Summer Meals Program, which offers meals to low-income children and teens at sites throughout Los Angeles to make sure they don't go hungry while they're out of school. For some of the students, the school lunch may be their only meal of the day. Over the next couple of months, more than 200,000 free and healthy lunches will be served at LA schools, parks and libraries. And so us being able to provide that meal, that healthy and that important meal, uh, make sure that no child in this city should ever question whether or not he or she is going to eat. They should be focused on fun, they should be focused on studies, they should be focused on friendship. 
An Independence Day Tardiada, or party, was hosted by District 1 Councilmember Gil Cedillo at MacArthur Park. It had a Latin American flair and included mariachi bands, music, Latin food, and dancing. And in this political climate, I don't think anything is more important than appreciating the traditions of this country uh, and its diversity. The skies above South LA exploded in dazzling arrays of red, white, and blue, and other colors too. Gil Reyes reports on the snap, crackle, and pop from Independence Day celebrations. The 4th of July fireworks spectacular at LA Memorial Coliseum ended with a bang, winding down in a blaze of star-spangled glory. But earlier in the day, before the arrival of 20,000 people, before the kids hopped on the carnival rides, there was this, thousands and thousands of firework shells getting set to launch and light up the sky. The city of Los Angeles hired the company Pyro Spectaculars, based in Rialto, to put on the show. Uh, it's the city funding. Uh, we appreciate the city's recognition that this is a cultural event. Uh, that uh, benefits all the citizens in the city of Los Angeles. And we're proud that it's happening here in District 9. Uh, we have shells ranging up to 8 inch in diameter that break with a, a radius of over 400 feet across. Um, we have shells ranging from simple spheres, which are known as peonies, to uh, pattern shells like happy faces with strobing eyes, jellyfish with that actually have tentacles, um, uh, ghost shells that uh, illuminate and fade in a wave across the sky. Lasting about a half hour, this annual extravaganza is one of the longest and largest fireworks shows in all of California. Happy birthday, America. At the LA Memorial Coliseum in Exposition Park, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. LA City Council Districts 8 and 9 teamed up to host the Coliseum Fireworks Show, which was free to the public. Well, a popular South LA park recently got a major and long overdue upgrade. Rich Samuels has more on the changing face of life in South LA. 9th District Council member Curran Price joined with area residents and the Department of Recreation and Parks to celebrate the reopening of Vermont Square Park. New landscaping, new playthings for children and for adults. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Uh, better lighting. Yeah. I, we even got some barbecue pits up here, don't we? Serving over 11,000 residents within a one half mile walking distance, Vermont Square Park represents just part of $36 million that are being spent on recreation facilities in the area. But we're doing this so that our community has a safe, clean, and quality recreation space. I think our families and our kids deserve that, don't you? This area resident looks forward to enjoying the park with all the new features for both kids and adults. Uh, the swings are interactive. The parents can swing not only the child but swing with the children and the playground is expanded for both ages. To the youth of this community, we hope you enjoy and take care of this park. It is your park. Come use the park. Take ownership of the park. We heard you. Uh, the Department of Parks and Recreation heard you. And working together, we have made a difference. Three, two, one. From South Los Angeles, this is Rich Samuels for LA This Week. Vermont Square Park is located about a mile south of USC, directly across the street from the Vermont Square Public Library. Well, quick lessons from LA City firefighters could mean the difference between life and death. As Gil Reyes reports, everyone is encouraged to learn. There we go. We're going to go 30 times here. Jazzy Johnson learned how to save a life in practically no time. It only took about like two minutes, three minutes, not long at all. She learned on Sidewalk CPR Day. The L.A. City Fire Department gave free lessons at over 70 sites throughout L.A. County, including here at North Hollywood Red Line Station. We've been having quite a big turnout, a lot of people excited to learn uh, hands-only CPR so that they'll be able to save a life possibly one day. The City Fire Department says the vast majority of cardiac arrests occur at home. Family members can double the chances of a relative's survival by learning hands-only CPR. 
to be used only when a victim stops breathing or when their heartbeat has stopped. These chest compressions could keep vital blood flowing until first responders arrive. You'll need about 100 compressions per minute. No rescue breathing is needed. But just make sure that you know, you're know you comfortable and you're just kind of falling down. On, you, know, you, you don't have to use your arms. Your okay, arms okay. shouldn't be getting tired. It should just be you lifting. You're, you're actually just moving your back. LA City firefighters will teach you how next time they set up a sidewalk clinic in your area. Absolutely, I will be able to help save someone's life. In North Hollywood, I'm Gil Reyes for LA This Week. Last year, more than 10,000 people in Southern California learned hands-only CPR with quick sidewalk lessons like the ones you just saw. Well, celebrate the arts while helping out a good cause, take a tour of the South LA wetlands, and get cozy for a night of Shakespeare under the stars. All these in this week's Things to Do. One night each summer, Angelinos descend upon inner city arts, turning the award-winning campus into the creative epicenter of Los Angeles. Art lovers from all over, including young professionals, downtown residents, and friends from the neighboring arts district, converge at the corner of 7th and Kohler to celebrate the transformational power of creativity. Enjoy live music on the rooftop, gourmet food, trucks, drinks, art installations, and more. Proceeds from the 10th annual Summer on 7th event support the inner city arts mission and helps provide underserved youth in LA with access to free arts education. For more, visit inner-cityarts.org. Join youth and the South LA Wetlands Current Artists for the launch of the installation Looking at Water, History and Community. Take a guided tour of the park, talk with artists directly, and participate in a writing workshop. Every two years, the current LA Public Art Biennial focuses on an issue affecting Los Angeles and other global cities to inspire civic discourse and use contemporary art to deepen connections between people. Current LA gives a new perspective by taking art out of the museum environment and into LA's diverse neighborhoods. The citywide cultural event is presented by Mayor Eric Garcetti and the City of Los Angeles Department of Cultural Affairs. Griffith Park Free Shakespeare Festival is a summer season of free performances like no other. The festival includes main stage performances, pre-show family events including workshops, and a slate of extraordinary opening acts. Bring a blanket and a picnic to enjoy great theater in a great city, all free, all summer long. Shakespeare's anti-hero Richard III is the king you love to hate. His path to power is strewn with lies, manipulation, seduction, and murder. This electrified retelling is equal parts political satire and a chilling look at what happens when a charismatic and corrupt leader sets his sights on the highest seat of government. It all takes place on Saturday, July 16th and Sunday the 17th at Old Zoo at Griffith Park, located at 4730 Crystal Springs Drive. For more, visit iscla.org. And that's a look at some things to do. Well, that's going to do it for this edition. I'm Yana Kay, and from all of us here at LA This Week, thanks for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week. <laughs>